Uh, all right, so there's other news, and like I mentioned, the, the Lucas Shaw uh, article. So according to, this is on the F4W website, uh, according to a report from Lucas Shaw Bloomberg, McMahon, Vince McMahon is seeking as much as $9 billion from a sale. So that's even more than what you had been suggesting, which was which was eight. Eight, yeah. Well, of course he wants more, you know, and that's a good way. If you think you can get eight, you p- go public and say nine mm-hmm. to get the bidding up, and maybe that will work. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's worth six and a half on the stock market right now, and that's even inflated because, you know, it, it's, you know, but what's what's it worth? You know, it's like if, is, um, you know, if if you're going like, you know, 20 times profit, just to throw that, the, was it was profit last year? I, I, mean, I, I wrote the story, you know, I think it was like 180 million or something like that, maybe, I don't know, maybe even less. Um, so, you know, it's not, you know, whatever i mean like if, if i'm comcast and you say nine billion it's like kind of like maybe that's too much and again you know the indication is comcast isn't interested and they were the most likely they were the ones where it made the most sense fox i don't think is interested um they want to sell to a media company but that may not be the right thing and then you know endeavor nine billion's a lot i mean yeah they paid four billion for ufc and that was a high price and this isn't any more valuable than UFC. You know, it's years later, so some value has gone up. And, you know, UFC would be sold for, you know, if UFC was on the market, it would be sold, you know, it would be essentially the same value as WWE, you know, realistically. Um, and it probably would be, you know, six, seven, you know, but not nine. And, um, but whatever he can get, you know, he's going to get. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, I, I, what I, you know, know for sure is that there is no deal that is done, um, for sure. Um, and I don't know how many people are out there wanting it. Um, you know, if McMahon wants nine, I mean, I think he might be able to get it from Saudi Arabia because, you know, if they, if they really want it, it's not too much for them, Mm -hmm. but that seems like a high price. You know, I mean, Saudi Arabia has been like the greatest thing for Vince's pocketbooks because, you know, that he's, he's exactly what they want. You know, the, the idea of having the top, this is what they want. They want the top company only. And it's got to be popular in America and it's got to be a product that can be exported around the world. That's what they want. Um, you know, I mean, and again, um, soccer is a different, is, is a different ball game and, and they know they can't be the top league golf. They do want to be the top league. You know, I mean, you know, they, they attempted it. They aren't, but that's the goal. But if they buy WWE, they are the top league in that endeavor, but they want, it's important for them to be, to be the top league, that would be like something they would pay a premium for. And then also he tweeted and he said, for what it's worth, sources have expressed skepticism that many traditional media companies will buy WWE, but there's definitely some interested parties like Endeavor, Middle East, uh, and such. And so this, well, this well, part about up, the up? traditional media, I, I also it's heard like that on did- another podcast, but... It's kind of like, wouldn't that be the one that would want to buy them? Yes, but a lot of these companies are not. Again, that's another thing, you know, I spent all morning on that. It's like, you know, and you know, the the, the Bally's bankruptcy thing is like yes. the start of something very, very different when it comes to sports. It's a huge story because, you know, we always talk how high can these sports rights go. And essentially, I mean, the thing that I learned, you know, I didn't learn. I mean, but it was outright said to me by, uh, you know, president of a major sports league. Um, that, you know, these rights are way too high. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's, it's, it, we're, we're getting paid more than we're worth and that can't go forever. And now we're finally perhaps at a situation where, you know, the, the you know, is it, is it going to happen? I mean, cause now the, the new thing with the baseball, this is a, a catastrophic thing for baseball, you know, and, and because a lot of these teams, you know, that was a key, huge revenue source yeah. were these local rights fees. And and this company's, you know, the bankruptcy means they're not going, you know, they're under contract. They expected to get them for years and years and years. And now this company is going bankrupt because they cannot pay it. And that's the beginning. And then other media companies are looking at, you know, many of these media companies, WBD being one of them. I mean, they're, they're, it's not like, 
10 years ago where, you know, these networks, NBC and, you know, USA and, you know, that whole portfolio were these giant profit making places. And they, they still are making a profit, you know, like ESPN's giant profitable, but they're still doing cutbacks because they look at the future and they see a more murky future because, um, you know, what are people, how are people consuming? I mean, cable TV is, is changing and, and, um, you know, in the class that I taught today, I mean, almost nobody had cable, <laughs> and 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 they have, the, 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 they they have their different streaming services, but um, you know, and these are sports people, um, and you know, and they you know they'll have YouTube TV or something like that, which is streaming, but and allows them to get the you know the games on whether it's ESPN or TNT or whatever, but it's. Um, so it's still like the stations are still there and they're still the most popular stations. Uh, but, you know, um, the the nature of the revenue and everything like that is very, very different. And, um, you know, everyone's everyone's scared of a big purchase right now, I think is the best way to put it, you know, of a WWE like like in its own weird way. I mean, they wouldn't have gotten the same amount of money, but if they were on the market when UFC was on the market, there would have probably been more suitors then. Because, you know, that th this uh, going into the um, iceberg thing um, wasn't anyone it wasn't anything what he was thinking about in 2016. And today, everybody's worried about, like, what's going on? Where's this thing going in three years? Nobody knows. It used to be like you plan five, 10 years ahead. You know, we all do. And now it's like 18 months from now, this thing's going to be different. So any planning is just like, you know, put a blindfold on and, you know, throw your dart you know what i mean because you don't know people say they know even like even like nick khan who probably knows more than almost anyone he doesn't know either none of us do where this thing's going because it's a brave new world and it was only a couple weeks ago when that cnbc person said to nick khan that he didn't think comcast was in on the bid but doesn't that that ultimately hurts wwe to have people pulling out of the of, yes. of the bidding yes yes Maybe Vince won't sell, but, but there are going to be people who want it. And, um, you know, if, if they don't sell, the stock price goes way, way down also. Um, so for whatever that's worth, you know, and, um, but obviously Vince wants to sell and he's probably trying to find someone who's going to keep him in charge, you know, even though they say different. Um, so, you know, but again, yeah, I mean, you know, when all the, every, everyone's talking about like, you know, WWE this, WWE that. It's like WWE, if they sell in six months, it's going to be a very different company. Even de I, Look, I, I know UFC so so very, very well what happened in 2016. And Endeavor changed so much there. I mean, it's like, yeah, you got the same fights and Dana, you still have Dana pr promoting it. And from the outside, you look and it looks like it's the same thing. On the inside, completely, completely different. And no loyalty to the people who bought the brand. I mean, people who work in WWE, if, if Endeavor gets it, I mean, so many of those people that, that thought they were lifers, you know, are going to end up not being lifers, you know. Um, so it's, you know, and nobody's, you know, I don't say nobody, you know, no, nobody's safe. Nobody's safe, you know, pretty much. Yeah. So it just becomes, a, you know, again, what, you know, like, again, 18 months from now, maybe nine months from now, you know, there's, you know, wrestling could be very, very different than it is even today. Poor Steffi. Every time she comes out, she gets... Poor Steffi, all right. Yeah. Any, anyway, she, her and her dad were in the in the ring, and he was oh, going to give gonna her... it's going to be quite a review a, tonight. He was going to give her a trophy for something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the good old days. And then uh, Shane tells his dad he wants to run Monday Night Raw. <laughs> this is insane. Meanwhile, right. there's gigantic news in the world of wrestling that we're not talking about because we got to talk about a Raw from 25 years ago. Yes, Granny? Can I stay long enough to hear what the news is? I know what it is. Well, we don't know what the news is officially, Granny, so just tune in tomorrow. No. <laughs> what a crummy show. Oh. Wow! <laughs> what do you want me to do about it? What the... <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.